Welcome Illumineers to another video, I'm Illumineer Franz. Today we'll be taking a deep dive into one of the many talented artists for our new game, looking at his past work and using them as a reference to dig deeper into his arts for Lorcana. It's time to learn about Nicholas Cole. Nicholas Cole is a character designer and illustrator known by his well manicured mustache who loves telling stories. He's worked on many titles that you may have heard of. For starters, the Spyro, Reignited, and Crash Bandicoot reboots. He has a long-running personal project called Jellybots with some amazing art and a digitally published art book that's well worth checking out. In 2009, Cole graduated from the Rhode Island School of Design, one of the most prestigious art schools in the country. Since then, he's worked in various fields of the entertainment industry and has worked for studios such as DreamWorks, Nintendo, Riot Games, Warner Brothers, and of course, Disney. Though he has worked on various IPs and changes his style to suit the project, his work is always very recognizable by his shape language. Shapes are a powerful tool to use when designing characters, and Cole has an impressive understanding of using them to create emotive characters full of movement. Cole brought his expressive character illustration to Disney by illustrating three of the seven cards that were released at D23. The other cards are illustrated by unique artists that will be featured in other videos meaning Cole is the only artist brought on for multiple cards so far. Before we take a look at his cards and see why he was chosen to set so much of the artistic tone for this game, let's go over two of his older designs first. Spyro. The 1998 Spyro game was released on the original PlayStation, and artists were working with limited shapes such as polygons when creating the original Ball of Fire. For the Reignited trilogy, Nicholas Cole was tasked with bringing the iconic dragon to life within modern constraints. While the original Spyro was angular, Cole was able to streamline the design. The reptilian body of Spyro is all curves, which contrasts nicely to the spines, horns, and bat-like wings. All of the changes Nicholas made allow for a greater silhouette and greater character expression. Spyro is able to express himself with fluid body language and chunky expressive eyebrows that bring out his youthful personality and appeal. Crash Bandicoot Crash Bandicoot's original design operated under the same constraints as Spyro's. He's angular, and made up of big shapes to better be seen at a distance. Nicholas Cole likes these big shapes, however, and was able to keep the overall silhouette and characteristic traits while refining wherever he could. Crash's big head and no neck must have been an interesting challenge to work with here, and Cole seems to have solved this problem by giving Crash a bit more of a defined anatomy. In the original game, his torso looks more like a Dorito, but Cole was able to give him a spine and bad posture for the reboots. It allows for a wider range of body language for the animators of the game to play with. Considering the silly nature of Crash, being able to express himself further is a very big plus. Now that we've introduced you to Cole and his unique style a little bit, let's get into the cards that he's made for Disney. Mickey, the brave little tailor. We can really see Cole flex his character design skills here. The costume Mickey is wearing is slightly different from that of the 1938 cartoon. The reasoning behind this I go into during the previous Lore Kana video, which should be up on the screen right now. But the overall shapes are similar with the loose tunic, belt, and cap. Cole also brings the viewer back to animation time of old with Mickey's dark, close-set eyes and desaturated colors. The exaggerated size of shapes in Nicholas Cole's design emphasize Mickey's small stature. Despite his stick-thin arms and legs, Mickey grips scissors the size of his whole body with an easy smile. Even without the giant in frame, Cole manages to make Mickey feel small but mighty. Cruella de Vil. The color of the green banner plays very well with the red in Cruella's design. Red and green are complementary colors, that is, colors on the opposite side of the color wheel. Complementary colors are all contrast and friction and Nicholas Cole played with these colors to emphasize the loud shapes in Cruella's design. The lighting also plays a very big role in this card's art. Cruella is standing in front of a doorway, and the light source is coming through the door behind her. This gives her a rim light around the edges of her big coat. Another light source shines from below, an eerie green light. This bathes the smiling form of Cruella in a sickly color, reflecting her sinister motives, and fills the room with green tendrils from the smoke surrounding her. I would also like to point out that while the smoke is surrounding Cruella in a familiar form, the iconic cigarette is not in her hand. We already know that Nicholas Cole loves big shapes, and he made a fantastic decision playing up the shapes in Cruella. Her hood takes up a large amount of space in the art of this card, and immediately draws your eyes to the cruel expression of her face. Elsa the Snow Queen 
This is another original costume designed by Cole, and it is stunning. The overall color palette for Elsa is still icy and blue, but incorporates more purple to tie into the purple ink color. The background is fairly generic, with some mountains and trees, but the mountains arc in such a way to frame Elsa's face. It seems like this was intentional, as all of the curved shapes in this piece seem to lead right back to Elsa. This card is also another example of lighting from below, but unlike Cruella, the effect is not sinister. The lighting is white rather than green, and is softer. This gives her more of an ethereal, magical appearance. We can also see a magical book in the foreground, the book combined with the hood to give her staple shapes that we often see in traditional mages in stories and role-playing games. It's incredible to see how Cole brought his unique talents to the table while also keeping the original feel of all of these Disney characters. Which one is your favorite? Which one of the artists would you like us to see cover next? Let us know your thoughts on our thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell. I'm Illumineer Franz, and I will see you back here next time at the Traverse Tavern.